Hi, William here again. Uh, welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me again. Now this week, uh, something a little offbeat, but not entirely unconnected with wood turning. Now, I'm lucky enough to live in a part of rural Somerset where there is an abundance of wood. However, abundance of wood doesn't mean the wood is usable since it all takes uh, some kind of processing and storage before it's usable. Now, my particular challenge in this area is one of milling. Uh, now, for large quantities, if I'm lucky enough to get a whole tree or something, I can ship it to a local mill and get them to do it. But for smaller quantities, it presents me with quite a challenge. Now, outsourcing milling, of course, it takes time and it takes money, uh, increasing the cost of my already fairly expensive hobby. Now, I own a couple of chainsaws, um, I don't use them with any regular frequency and therefore I'm not very proficient with their use. This means inevitably when I'm doing uh, some uh, milling freehand that I lose valuable wood. So this week I've set myself a challenge and that challenge is to build a chainsaw mill uh, the purpose of which is to reduce my dependency on outsourcing. Now for this project I've set myself some boundaries to work in. Uh, the first one is that uh, I'm going to use uh, resources and equipment that I already have uh, with the aim of not purchasing anything new unless it's critical to the project. The second boundary is that the mill uh, is not to be of the horizontal or Alaskan type since I've tried to work with these before without much success. Now I've had a trawl through YouTube and looked at the efforts of others uh, in the improvisation of sawmills. So after some uh, investigations and consideration uh, the technique that I've uh, settled upon is the principle of the vertical chainsaw mill. So a vertical chainsaw mill is one where the chainsaw is uh, mounted on a carrier and moved down the post and the timber to be uh, milled is presented uh, in an upright fashion like this. Now the three advantages as I see it uh, is that the weight of the chainsaw seems to do the job in uh, using gravity to cut the wood and therefore there's little effort uh, required to do it. Secondly um, I can see that the rough design I have in mind I can utilize a lot of uh, 4x4 fence posts which I have uh, to hand. And lastly, uh, vertical chainsaw milling with the chainsaw actually um, captured in the carrier going down the uh, vertical post would seem a lot safer than horizontal milling, at least uh, for me. Now, I appreciate there are lots of limitations in uh, the boundaries that I've set. Uh, one in particular is that my chainsaw uh, is limited to a 20 inch bar and therefore that's going to be pretty much the limit of my uh, milling capability unless I upgrade the bar. Also I'm aware that you can get uh, special bars for milling and of course chains with uh, for example a 10 degree pitch on them uh, but at this moment uh, I'm just interested in putting together a mill and testing it to see how effective it is. Now for the vertical post I'm going to use this fence post, it's one of three I had surplus from a uh, fence repair project uh, and because it's incised I'm going to plane it down a couple of mil just to get a nice smooth surface. Now I have to make a carrier for the chainsaw which will allow it to slide up and down the vertical post uh, but also keep it firmly in the same orientation. And now I'm going to fabricate this carrier from uh, an abandoned shelving project uh, for which I had some white oak plank. Now there's little point in me sharing the design or the dimensions of the carrier because it's going to be different for each type of chainsaw of course. So the design for the carrier hasn't really been planned, it's just being made up uh, ad hoc as I go along.
Now to get a nice straight and clean cut the chainsaw needs to be very firmly anchored to the carrier. I've seen various methods of attachment of the chainsaw to the carrier including screwing it through holes drilled through the chainsaw body. The untested technique I've decided to attempt is to use large cable tidies uh, anchored to the carrier at three points. Now, as I'm doing a test fit here uh, and thinking about attaching the base, it suddenly occurs to me that the swarf or the shavings from the chainsaw are going to need somewhere to exit from the base of the chainsaw. Now, I'm no carpenter, so I'm going to make the hole in the bottom by cutting a number of slots using the bandsaw and then packing them out of the chisel. Now I'm assembling the carrier using a copious quantities of number 8 screws. Now having got the basic shape of the carrier assembled, I decided it would be a good idea to add some uh, packing furniture inside the carrier to help stabilise the chainsaw. So having got the carrier assembled, I wanted to check now that the carrier slides up and down the vertical post. Now here I'm just marking out where I'm going to put the cable tidies. Now once I've got the holes drilled it's a question of threading through the cable tidies and tightening them with a set of pliers. Now there was a little bit too much movement of the chainsaw in the carrier for me so I decided to add some rubber pads to try and stiffen it up. And also, off camera, I added the third cable tidy through the top handle. Now I decided to give the wooden components of this project a few coats of a good quality wood preservative uh, to give it some longevity. In fact I'm using some Ron Seal 5 year wood stain varnish um, which I had left over from another project. Having given the wood preservative a day to cure I concrete the post in using some uh, spare rubble and a bag of postcrete. Now I want a firm base on which to place the lumber 
for milling, so I'm going to use this old uh, railway sleeper. My intention is to cut it into uh, three pieces, making a base approximately one square yard or one square metre. Now I intend to use a chainsaw to cut this and I've pre-marked the railway sleeper in three equal sections. Now I'm always wary of metal artefacts such as nuts, bolts, screws and nails in recycled wood so I'm going to give this railway sleeper a good checking with a metal detector before I attempt to cut it. Having levelled the ground for the base, I've placed the three sections of sleepers and screwed some old large board to add stability. Now I've been pondering how to stabilise the log uh, for milling and I've come up with the idea of two additional posts with brackets on them which I can screw to the log uh, to make sure it doesn't move during milling. The two stabilising posts will be bolted to the base using these bolt down shoes. So once I've planed, cut and treated the two stabilising posts, it's just a question of clamping on the shoes. Now at this stage I don't know whether these two stabilising posts can be bolted down permanently or whether they're going to be moved around. I guess it's uh, dependent on the method of attachment to the log. Now to attach the log to the stabilisation posts, I'm going to use a couple of these general construction brackets attached to a slide which slides up and down the posts. So I have another piece of old laminated oak to fabricate the slides from. To give it all a bit of extra stability, I've decided to make these slides an interference fit. Now I've secured the stabilisation post using some six inch coach screws. Also notice I've painted a red line on the base where the bar of the chainsaw sits. This is necessary as a reference point for positioning the wood at the base. So the theory of it is that you start off by lining up the base of your log with the red line. You then mount the chainsaw on the vertical post lining up the top of the wood with the chainsaw bar. You can see here I have a problem in that the chainsaw bar is perilously close to the bracket of the stabilisation post. I had to dismount the stabilisation post and move it about two inches away from the bar. Now once I'd done that I was easily able to line up the bar with the centre line of the log and screw it in position. I also tightened up the screws on the slide uh, which previously I had left quite loose. So having stabilised the log I think we're ready for milling. You can see I have put a dust sheet down here to catch most of the shavings. There are two issues here. Firstly, the chainsaw carrier doesn't move very freely down the guide post. And secondly, if you look at the base of the log, it moves around quite a bit. And here in the final stages, it moves enough to stop the operation.
Now you can see what happened there, that the base of it moved um, and it caused the blade to jam. But I think apart from that, it's actually quite a straight cut. Straight edge will tell. Almost perfect. Now the second attempt will be on this piece of U and as you can see I've added a bracket at the bottom to stop it from moving around. Now the technique here is to let the saw uh, cut under its own weight using gravity of course uh, but you have to keep uh, rocking it backwards and forwards to stop it sticking on the post. Now you will have noticed that I haven't used the second stabilization post and I'm not sure it's ever going to be necessary. Okay, I think we can count this as a success. Uh, there's about an eighth of an inch variation across the cut on both uh, pieces I cut, uh, which is more than adequately accurate for my needs. Now, the only change I would make at this stage is to slightly uh, increase the downward angle on the chainsaw so that it's parallel with the bed. At the moment it isn't. No. Apart from that, I don't really intend to make any changes at this stage. I'm quite happy uh, with the way the project has turned out. Um, I shall probably make one or two tweaks in due course. If you do have any ideas for improvements, please leave them in the comments box below or email me to this address. I'll try and answer all the questions. OK, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again next week. So next week I'm going to be taking an in-depth look at my default finish.